Hey there, Gareth here at CIWAWA. If your IT service management is hanging, then switch it off and on again. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to all of you incident management folk and those of you that are involved in managing incidents for your business and customers. Uh, and that subject, as you may have guessed, is about putting tickets into monitoring. Now, for those of you that haven't heard this, are, or are unsure about what I mean, don't sweat, it's not a universal term. I don't think you'll find it in any framework glossaries, but it's what a lot of IT departments or IT providers do at the end of a major incident. Now, if you're watching this channel, there's a good chance you've been involved in major incidents at some point, and you've probably had that breakthrough moment where service has been restored, and as part of the wrap up, maybe on the bridge call, the suggestions made to put the incident ticket into monitoring. Now, a lot of the times, I've been involved in majors where this suggestion's been made. It's from a real cautionary, conservative perspective. You know, major incidents are, are never a nice experience for your users, and placing the ticket into monitoring is often suggested as a, well, we're not confident we're out the woods yet, let's keep our eye on it perspective. That intent is, of course, eminently sensible. Your users have just had a disruptive experience, their confidence in their IT service may have been dented, and we need to maybe treat them with kid gloves for a short while longer. But what value is keeping the incident ticket in your service management tool set open or on hold whilst this monitoring period completes? I'd argue that that in itself is potentially more damaging to your future service than marking the ticket as resolved once service has been confirmed as restored. Now, don't get me wrong, I fully agree that after a major incident, IT service owners should be taking direct action to assure their user base that the service is once again stable. And even if root cause at that point is unknown, additional measures are being put in place to provide those sorts of assurances that I mentioned. However, in my experience, I've seen a lot of incident teams when asked to place the ticket in monitoring do just that. No additional measures, no extra checks, just simply leaving the ticket there until the customer is happy to confirm that the incident is resolved and that the issue hasn't reoccurred in however long period uh, of time. And it's that element of putting tickets into monitoring that I question what value is that bringing to you or your IT service. If your support teams have restored service and have confidence that the action taken has restored service, my view is that the ticket at that point should be marked as resolved providing that users have confirmed that they can now do what they couldn't before and the service owner has outlined what additional measures are going to be introduced to increase the confidence of the user base. Now, should the issue reoccur, then that is a separate incident. It broke, we fixed it, one incident, it broke again, another incident. The reason I say that, at the point the reoccurrence happens, it's an assumption that the same thing has happened again. And by dealing with the second issue under the same ticket, simply reopening the first incident ticket, we could be dangerously blending two issues into one, which down the line is gonna impede your problem management trending and root cause analysis. Uh, of course, if after the incident, it's confirmed that the second issue was the same as the first, then they should, of course, both be linked to a common problem record, but each occurrence of the service failing should have its own incident ticket with defined steps of what was taken to restore service on each occasion. Placing tickets into monitoring, then simply reopening that original ticket should the issue occur, uh, dangerously skews your service metrics. I think it also introduces inconsistencies into your service metrics. Why I say that? Well, let's say you have a major incident, you fix it, you place the ticket into monitoring, and it happens again four hours later. Activity to restore service is done under the original ticket, and again, your teams fix the issue and place the ticket into monitoring. It gets to the end of the monitoring period, and it's agreed that the ticket can be resolved. Some moments later, you have another reoccurrence, and this time a new ticket is created. You now have two incidents covering three issues, uh, and it's not representative. Uh, so, so what's the answer? Leave the ticket in monitoring indefinitely, or until you are confident that the underlying issue is resolved? Well, that's just gonna result in a lot of incidents being kept open just in case, and blurring the line between incident and problem management. Um, if the ticket is open, well, what purpose is it serving? What's anybody doing specifically against that ticket uh, whilst it's on hold in a monitoring period? 
If there's investigation into what's causing these repeat issues, then that should be being tracked under the problem ticket. Uh, and as we talked about, if there is extra activity required short term to provide additional assurances, absolutely great. But again, tracking that under an incident ticket is probably not the best mechanism for doing that. Importantly, incident tickets are not a catch-all for all operational activity. If an incident ticket is open, it's going to be consuming your incident management resource to a degree. Uh, when in this scenario, there's not a fat lot for your, for your incident management team to do. So again, what's the point of having that ticket lingering around? So my advice is if your technical owners of the service are confident that the action they have taken has restored service, they can outline what extra measures are going to be done uh, until root cause is known and users have confirmed services back, don't place your tickets into monitoring, mark them as resolved. Should another issue, and it might be the same as the first, occur, then start the incident process again under a separate ticket. Uh, a lot of times, in my experience, the ask to place the ticket uh, into monitoring comes from the customer or stakeholders you provide the service to. Of course, it can be a difficult conversation to challenge what a customer is asking for. So I found the following steps really useful for managing this scenario. When customers ask for the ticket to be placed in monitoring, it's important to outline what routine monitoring and event management is in place anyway for that service. Of course, for critical services, which fall in scope of major incident management, naturally there will be, or should be, uh, elements of monitoring in place. That might be invisible to the customer, so explaining that can be useful. Um, as we've mentioned, make sure it's clear to the stakeholder what extra activities are going to be happening in the short term by the technical owner of the service, um, uh, and who is doing that, what the outputs are, how they will be tracked, and, and make sure that's clear that that's going to happen outside of the incident ticket. Therefore, the, the, the vehicle of the incident management ticket does not need to be kept in an on-hold state. Finally, get your problem team engaged as soon as reasonably possible as part of your major incident process. That may sound odd when we're talking about incident management. However, I found that customers like the warm, fuzzy feeling that the major incident process gives them in these sorts of scenarios. The issue has focus, they get regular updates, they're assured that the A team are looking at the issue and moving away from this process can feel uncomfortable or as if the issue is being put into the long grass. If you engage your problem management process early, it can act as that warm handover from incident uh, and give the customer the insurances that this still remains a, property, uh, a priority, albeit tracked via a different process. And make sure that your problem process gives your customer the same warm, fuzzy feeling as your incident one does. So if there's a high priority problem, root cause isn't known, it's causing a lot of tickets to land at the desk, then again, make sure that that has got the appropriate comms and updates going to your stakeholders so that they don't feel like it's in the long grass. Now, despite what I said earlier, in monitoring can have a place within your incident process. We've all been there on a major incident where service has been restored, but it's unclear who has done what, if anything, to restore service. Or a fix has gone in, but confidence is really low that it will have the desired effect. In this scenario, I agree that placing the ticket into monitoring to see if the issue is actually fixed is a really good idea, particularly where service disruption is frequent and inconsistent. However, try and get agreement for how long the ticket is to be in monitoring before you can have confidence that it is actually fixed. For example, you may manage uh, incidents related to failing batch jobs uh, your teams may confirm that they think they've fixed the issue while the batch jobs are failing. However, you need to wait for the next scheduled batch job to confirm that. In that scenario, yeah, put the ticket into monitoring until the next batch job uh, completes. And once that's done successfully, then the ticket can be marked as resolved. Obviously, if the next batch job uh, runs or doesn't run properly, um, then again, you've still got an incident on your hand and the ticket should be taken out of your monitoring and action progressed to get to the bottom of why that, that issue is occurring or um, implementing a workaround. One more thing within monitoring, I like to use the analogy of having to make a journey in your car running into an issue and having to call your breakdown service provider. Now in that scenario, um, a man in a van is gonna turn up, he's gonna to look to, to get you back on the road, he's gonna to look to restore service. 
Um, and once he's done his job to restore whatever's or to, to fix whatever's wrong with your car, he's going to wave you on his way. Now, if he wasn't um, confident that what he'd done is going to allow you to complete your journey, he's probably going to maybe follow you down the road for you know half a mile, uh, maybe wait by the side of the road with you for your car to keep ticking over. Um, but the in monitoring sort of analogy is well, it would be like the the AA or the RAC man patching up uh, your car, um, sending you on your way, and then following you round for the rest of your journey just in case uh, the issue happens again. Of course, they don't do that. Uh, and I think that's a neat way to explain why um, in monitoring, uh, unless you're not confident that you fix the issue, is probably a bad idea. Let's get the ticket marked as resolved. If it happens again, it happens again, and we'll deal with it uh, as a separate incident. One of the minor last thing, I've also seen occasions whereby as part of their major incident, when the ticket is placed into in monitoring, the priority is also adjusted downwards from a P1 to a P2 or P3 or whatever. I think that's a really bad idea. I don't think it adds anything to your service other than adding inconsistency to your service metrics. And you know, why would you do that? What, what value is changing the priority of a major to a P3 just because it's now in monitoring? Again, bad practice in my opinion. That's it for this time. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, and see you next time at COWA.